Welcome to the Path Podcast, where we will travel the lives of some bold women, from dreams to detours to destiny. She did not choose this path. This path chose her. This is the Path Podcast. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Path Podcast with your girl, Arlene. Today, I am so excited to introduce to you my very first guest, my soror with Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, soror LaDonna L. Wilkerson Roberts. But before I share more about LaDonna, let me share what the show is about. We are on the couch today, traveling this bold sister's path that some of us could never imagine traveling. And that is the path through domestic violence. Hear me clearly when I say through domestic violence. As you have already heard in my opening and will continue to hear throughout all my episodes, she did not choose this path. This path chose her. Today's show is for anyone that's ever been mentally, verbally, physically, or emotionally abused, currently in an abusive relationship, or you may not be sure due to the different ways abuse shows up in our lives. Sisters, when I envisioned this podcast and all the women I wanted to come through to share their stories to help others, LaDonna was always top on my list. Her story, her example of strength after living through domestic violence was one of the most unimaginable tragedies that captured the attention of news stations in Georgia, as you will hear after I tell you a little bit about her first. LaDonna Roberts is an investigations manager and is the founder and chief executive officer of Austin Tyler Foundation Incorporated. LaDonna is a victor of domestic violence and established Austin Tyler Foundation honoring her loving son, Austin Tyler Hayslip's memory. Austin Tyler Foundation is a nonprofit organization committed to embracing, educating, and empowering victims of domestic violence, as well as increasing community awareness in efforts to end a vicious cycle of domestic violence so victims live fulfilling lives beyond the abuse. LaDonna is the actual face of domestic violence. LaDonna has received honors and recognition for all her work in this lane, receiving most recently the 2020 Humanitarian Award by Gospel Choice Music Award and serves on the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, Survivors Advisory Council, as a voice for the voiceless, raising awareness and educating the community. LaDonna has been invited to speak and share her story with many organizations, churches, radio and television platforms. We will share at the end of the show how you can reach out to her and her organization for future speaking engagements and to give support to her worthy nonprofit. As a domestic violence survivor and advocate, LaDonna believes that we can start with awareness while making prevention a priority. She is a woman of God who feels she is fully directed by the Heavenly Father to make a difference in the fight against domestic violence and promote positive communication and healthy relationships. Everyone, I want you to join me in welcoming my Sarah, LaDonna Wilkinson Roberts. Hello, LaDonna. How are you? I am fine. Thank you. I sound so good on paper. <laughs> you are great on paper and it is still doesn't do you justice. I just wish everyone on here could meet you and experience the joy you bring to others that get to know you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Today is your day. Listen openly and honestly to make a plan, to be liberated, 
You're in a safe space, sister. Now let's talk real, real. LaDonna, before we get into that, that September 21st day that changed your life forever, let's first go back to the beginning. The relationship was good. Um, you know, you have these, you know, I, I call it these relationships that you really don't know the person till you know the person. Everything is all good and glorified at the time and you don't see things that you would normally see. Um, we met um, in law enforcement. I used to be a police officer. So I was working for the county police department and he was working for the city police department. So um, that's how we met. So in the relationship and let's keep in mind that the relationship and everything was fine up to a certain point. And then um, you, leave and come back, leave and come back. Statistics show that a woman leaving an abusive relationship seven to nine times before she actually leaves the abuser. So you just think about a woman that doesn't know that she is actually in a relationship of, of abuse. So, you know, you go back and tour with it. So the relationship at one point was, it was good. And then it came to um, 2003. Um, and that was when um, a first incident occurred between me and him and our son. So, um, 2003, before that day at the daycare, or 2003, you mean just at a different, um, something different that happened? Yes, that in 2003, because 2004 is just a whole nother uh, incident. So, 2003, I was leaving. Okay. It was me, my son, and a friend that was there at the property. And um, he came and he got upset and so because he's seen another man there and so he began to hit me and why I had my son in, his, in my hand and then he made um, a threat against the guy that was there so that's the first initial physical altercation and I think it's uh, I guess right here we could say you know knowing the different types of abuse. So you all can relate to the physical part of abuse, but we never talk about the sexual, the financial, and the emotional and psychological. So up until that point, it was just the, I later learned now, all this, what I'm saying is in stages and all after 2004, but I can implement certain parts that I know now that I didn't know at that time. So, um, so those things were, um, charges was filed and everything, um, police was called. And because not understanding, um, the victim, we always think about the abuser. And so I, um, went in what was called, um, by his attorney, because he was of course, an, uh, a police officer at the time in 2003. So um, I went to his attorney's office and the attorney, you know, typed up the letter and saying, you know, basically that I, he's a good man, uh, don't wanna lose his job and stuff. And at that point it was just where, okay, I don't want you to be around me. You have three kids. So um, let me just sign this and you don't need to, you know, lose your job. So thinking about, the abuser, not myself and my son. So um, I did that. And so only thing he got out of that was probation, um, anger management, and a fine, of course. But that was it after that. And then, you know, went on um, throughout the process of moving on with our lives, but I wasn't at that place where I was like totally because in my mind I, I this mm -hmm. Disney world life we live I want the the father the child exactly. myself the house and the white picket fence but reality that we live but as a every girl always dreaming fantasize about her husband the family and everything so 
that was one reason after that incident that I went back okay. to the relationship. And, um, let me ask you this. You did say that some things you learned later after everything had happened, you know, later when the tragedy happened, mm -hmm. that you find out the different types of forms of abuse that you saw clearly some of that leading up into that first incident that happened, that first um, abuse that happened? Well, yeah, after, after the fact, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, after the fact. What was it more like? Was it, you, can you define which one? What was it? It was it, emotional. I was, yeah, I was psychological and emotional. Psychological mm -hmm. and emotional. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't physical. And of I course. have worked with of course. some women these last 16 years, and they would prefer that the physical, because the physical you, you, um, hit, you know, you fight and then it's over with, but the words and constantly, um, downgrading, you know, you always remember that. So some women prefer to have the physical part and not the psychological and emotional abuse. Now that is something I, you, you would not think someone would feel that way because of the pain of that. But I do know anybody who has an internal uh, emotional uh, abuse, it is something that is in you that is just as painful as someone, you know, can be as painful to someone as someone hitting you. So I, I kind of understand that. I would have never thought that. But though. you remember, that is an interesting, you remember when we were smaller, um, sticks and stones mm -hmm. may hurt my bones, but words never Never yeah, we can't remember yes. all those. That's just the opposite. Exactly. You hit me, I'm gone. You know, that's okay. The pain is gone. Once the, the bruise and the discoloration is gone, that's fine. That's one thing. But if I constantly remember every word you say, you ugly, you fat, you no good, you know, you continue to think about those things. So that's that what makes a difference. And Everyone's situation is different. Yes. And everyone is in at a different point from that seven to nine times for a yes. woman to leave an abusive yes. relationship. So I may get um, a victim that's, you know, just on her third time. And, and yes. at that point, okay, find out where she's at. And she may still want to be there. So some other things we can do, you know, get her a safety plan, get her some resources so she can get a plan to, you know, move or know some options when, just when she's ready to leave the abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I, I read that on the uh, website and I know you may mention um, about the, you know, where women can go. They say that you should have a plan yes. before you do anything. And that was um, something profound that I learned also, because I understand that when I read it, but it's just, it's interesting. They said it's the most dangerous times are, is when a woman is leaving. Yeah. 75% um, is 75% um, um, increases the homicide when a woman decides to leave her abuser. So I was in that 75 percentile um, because I had already left the relationship. I had already ended it. We had no contact leading up to September 21st, 2004. I, we, I would so you were already out of the relationship? I was already out of it. Okay. So let me ask you this. When you made that decision to leave, were you talking to someone about it? Did someone no. you were confiding in anyone? No, uh, uh, and and like you said, you learn all these things afterwards, and that was one thing God um, showed me and said to me: awareness. Because even as an ex police officer sitting in the police academy for twelve weeks, it's only a two hour block on physical violence. What we could rest arrest for then it's nothing about the sexual and financial and all the other ones that you may encounter so this was something totally new so yeah I found out this after the fact 
And once again, I want everyone to remember she she was a police officer herself. And 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 that tells us a lot about the training, which you, you could I agree it's it needs to be more so people can understand it, everyone else to understand there is more to abuse than just the physical. And understanding all of that, it, it truly would help. Yes. You know, even officers. And then we, you being an officer and still learning a lot of that. Yeah. And that is very profound. Yes. And um, so to continue with the question, it, it, mm-hmm. when um, I was, it ended when I was over there. And um, after that March incident, I went, like I said, I went back um, shortly thereafter. I, he proposed, I accepted. And mm-hmm. You have this, the unction, this, the good feeling that, you know, we all have that sometimes we don't listen to. And um, also and I was at his place because we didn't never live together. I had my place, he had his. And um, someone called, someone called, a female called and asked for me something. So at that point, of course, I was mad. And, um, you know, it was just still me and Austin because he was working. And I, I went in the bathroom and I just asked God, is this supposed to be my husband? Show me. And mm-hmm. that, that is, it's, it's, some um, people say it all the time. Like if you, you don't ask God, if you ain't ready for the answer. That's true. And he I've started revealing and showing me things that, you know, this is, this isn't good. And, um, when, I was crying in the bathroom. My son came in and just touched my my knee. I was just sitting on on, on top of the um, stool, and um, mm-hmm. then he pulled off some tissue. And at that point, I was like, "Yeah, it, it if uh, you know, <laughs> if a three your baby can win this, I know it's 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 time to go." So at that point, yeah. the ring on his dresser. I got um, Austin and I, and, you know, we left and just ended it at that point. I mean, at that point, it was just, that was, I just knew it because he would start showing me, you know, during the time period that, no, this is, this is not, this is not healthy. This is not, so. Yes. Um, so let me ask you this. Nana, when you, mm-hmm. when you, when you then uh, told him that you, you were, you were not going to marry him what was his reaction just at that moment when he realized that? Oh, I just left the ring. He wasn't there. I left the ring at his okay. apartment, his key to the apartment, and that was it. And then the phone call, but it was no no balance, no calling or coming after that. Yes. Okay. So tell me, you you brought up Austin. Tell me, tell me before we talk about that day, tell me a little bit about Austin. Well, you know, just just like his mom, just uh, smile, energetic, um, love trucks, anything dealing with big trucks, um, cars and everything. Um, and he had started going to um, pre-K. So he was at Doherty County pre-K school. And uh, so, yeah, he was just four years old. But I mean, just just the average look four year old boy yep. loves his trucks. And 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 if he anything like you, I know he had a big smile oh, and just yeah. pupil person for a four year old. I'm sure. Yes. And exciting. Yes. <laughs> oh, wonderful. So, how long had he been going to that uh, the Doherty? Well, he had just care? started because school start in August, and mm-hmm. so it happened September. Okay, so let's go. Let's go back to let's go to that day. That day. September 21st, mm-hmm. you, were you, was it the end of the day, beginning of the day? Okay, let me take you back to, cause you know, we got to go back to get to that day. So after that, yes. I started looking at myself and asking God, you know, what I want, started looking and applying for different positions to move. Cause I was like, okay, I got a year before he starts regular, you know, the you know, kindergarten where, you know, definitely mm-hmm. be stable, um, where 
wherever, but transition. So I was started applying and, and looking at different jobs and, you know, just really looking at, you know, things for us and what, what I wanted to do to move. So I have interviewed several different positions um, up here in the metro uh, Atlanta area. And it was this one um, position I had applied for in, uh, and got an interview in September. And you know, when you just know that you're like, you killed this um, interview, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. I felt so good about the um, interview and everything. So then um, when I shook the direct, the deputy's hand after the interview, I said, okay, I'll be seeing you soon. And I bet he probably was like, oh, this, this lady is kind of arrogant or something. Uh-huh. Nevertheless, you know, um, the next week or whatever happened, um, he called me back and offered me the job. So I had two. Wonderful. Because my start date was supposed to be out, um, October 1st. Because um, it was still a state job. So, and I was still working for in the state agency at that time. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was like, oh, my God, I got two weeks. I got to find somewhere to uh, stay. I got to find the schools, you know, and I had um, a house in Albany as well. So I knew I would be coming back and forth. And even between this time, you know, I already had got um, a child support order, got Austin legitimated. Um, you know, we had went to court and, and everything in between this nine month um period after I had left the relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, So then once I got that call and I knew I had two weeks, that's when um, that morning of when I called to um, called him and asked him, would he meet me there to the school um, after I got off from work? So we could talk and he was just, you know, and I was working at a call center then. So, you know, them calls be coming in yes. and, you know, be like just lingering on the phone. So I said, mm-hmm. well, you know, I'm at work. I meet you there after I get off work. And the um, pre-K extended day wasn't far from my job. So it was that afternoon, say um, after four, about four, four thirty or something, he was already mm-hmm. there. Um, and Let me ask you a quick question, uh-huh. LaDonna, before that part, did, when you said meet me there so we can talk. So it was something, it, it wasn't at a, you weren't at a place where you were afraid, like you no. thought anything. No, to the, I hadn't yeah. had any conversation, any contacts. I mean, nothing, um, no visits. I mean, nothing. So no, at all. And not knowing, like I said, not knowing the statistics the potential risk for homicide increases 75 percent when you decide to leave the Mm -hmm. not knowing this because knowing this information prior to or even knowing the in-depth um abuse that i was i was in prior to i you know i would just me and austin just would have left but because he was still um getting him from Nana on his days um, when he and taking him to school, you know, that Monday, you know, because he had him that Saturday, so that Monday. So doing with that throughout that time, you know, now I d- did not n- know that I was in, in danger. Okay. Had, had, had he ever threatened your life or Austin's life ever still? Because I think the two with your answer, that would say no you would say no, but had he ever threatened your life? Just, you know how some people can sometimes say some work, some bad things, of course, but had he ever said it to a point no. where it kind of shook you before that happened? Either? No. Mm-mm. Okay. Okay. And I know you were yeah. saying that you weren't afraid because of course I'm sure then. Yeah. And then you, you know. thinking you, you meeting him, you, you are playing view. You at a school where there's other kids. Yes, exactly. Stuff so that it's not where it was, you know, come to the house and it's isolated or, or anything of the of that nature. Um, exactly. So, yeah. So when I got there from work, he had already got um, Austin, checked him out and put his book bag in the patrol car. And he was just waiting for me um, to, to come. And I seen Austin, hugged Austin. And he was just playing, uh, you know, run around in the 
where the buses depot, but of course no buses was there because um, it was after school. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I told him, hey, uh, I want to meet with you, let you know um, that I got a job offer in Atlanta and that, you know, we'll be moving. So what we're going to do as far as, you know, with your visitation and stuff. And um, that's when he, you know, said, you moving for, uh, with them for a man. I was like, what? No, I'm getting, I got a job that I got to move. And, you know, I just want to make sure how we can, um, you know, still do that. I'd be coming back because I, you know, still got the house and stuff. And so that what got him upset when I said that. And um, that's when uh, he pushed me. And then I, back then, it's so hard to uh, remember, but back then, you know, the flip phones was the style. So I pulled out my yes. phone and getting ready to call um, the police. And, you know, I'm calling the police on the police. And so he's like, no, I'm getting ready to go. Um, I already got him. I already checked him out of school. So I said, well, okay, then. So he was, he was. So he said that even after, right at that moment after he pushed you. Mm-hmm. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, if I re- read this correctly, he was in his police, he was in his car, the police car, mm-hmm. and in his uniform at the time. On duty. Mm-hmm. On duty. On, he yeah. was on duty. He was on duty. He was working. He was working. Okay. Okay. Was Austin supposed to go with him as no, well? No, uh-uh, that, no, we would, no. He was okay. just there for, for me to tell him that. But no, he was, yeah, he just went, he, he was on there to check him out. That's that. Fine. but he wasn't going with him but we all were leaving um okay this i'm sorry so okay so you say then he you just told him when you told him that i'm sorry you can pick back up yeah so he said that he had the um already checked him out and had his stuff in the car so that's when we were leaving he was walking in front of me i was behind him a little ways and I also was running around, still running around um, over there by the uh, where the buses come in, that area. It was just an open area. And mm-hmm. we turned to call for Austin to come. That's when he turned, um, pulled out a service revolver, shooting me once, walked past me after he shot me, um, calling for our son, um, shooting um, Austin once. And then, um, by the t- and it was like the handicap ramp, ramp that you go down and I was mm-hmm. shot in my hands. So I don't know how I, for the unbelievers, I don't know how I um, pressed down, but I know God got me up to the, to the top by the door and he mm-hmm. me to see him shoot himself. And then I had a, a friend that um, grandma was a, uh, one of the aides there at, at the extended day. And she came to the door and she pulled me in and I was yelling for Austin. So, and, and then at that time, once, of course, they heard the shoot, shots and stuff, they called um, EMS and the police and everything and everybody came then. So um, he and Austin died that day. And I'm the only survivor um, of this tragic um, event that just because uh, I was even ready to um, make a move. And one thing I learned that domestic violence is this main meaning, if you don't take anything, is power and control. Yes. So even though I was still in Albany, he was still somewhere in his mind thought he still had control over me, even though we weren't, you know, talking. But when he knew that I was moving, leaving, I'm just assuming because he's deceased and we don't know what his thoughts were at the time that um, that he he had lost the the control. Exactly. That that's what I thought. uh, That's exactly what I would think as well, is that he was losing total control with you being at least right there where he can monitor you closer Mm -hmm. and you in Austin, I'm sure. 
So let me ask you this. When they pulled you in, I just want to go back. And when they pulled you in and you said he shot Austin, did you know at that moment he he did shoot Austin? Well, I didn't I didn't see him shoot, but I, I, I heard the, the shot. Okay. So I didn't, I, that's one thing, I guess, why I still have my mind. And he had better um, purpose for me where he Amen. allowed me to see exactly baby. But I would agree with that. To see him shoot himself. Exactly. And so when the paramedics came and you went, of course, you had to go to the hospital too. And at what point in your, all of this, did you find out about Austin? It was um, because I had to do, they had to do emergency surgery on my hand. So it was before. Or that because I kept on asking, you know, where's my son? Where's my son? Um, and they even um, brought in a chaplain. And that's, I, and I, of course, I rate my mom is still three hours uh, away from me. And um, so the doctor said, okay, you calm down, you calm down, and we will take you to to Austin. And well, they, of course, they said your son. And uh, when they, you know, t- did put me in a wheelchair, whatever took me to him, and, and he was gone, that that's when they had to sedate me at that point. Yeah. And they just went ahead and took me, um, to surgery where they they did my surgery but before my surgery is when um i i was told that my son was um he was dead let me this is the part where when i first met you ladonna of course i didn't know you i met you at our church one of our churches uh uh crown jews uh yes event mm-hmm. and i, I only heard a little bit about you, a friend that we were with, I was with, and she said, if you hear her story and because I, you know, just was introduced to you, find out, found out that we were in the same sorority. And I'm like, she has such this bubbly attitude because for some people, for me, let me say the idea of thinking of losing a child is just one of the most um, uh, unimaginable things as a parent. Yeah. And, and then the way it happens is even, you know, multiplies it. So that's when I, I've always felt like I was in, in awe of your story because of the way you carry yourself and how you move and the, diff, the different things I've seen you, you do. And to go back to that day and just imagine that you had to go through emergency surgery, finding out your son was murdered by his father. I, I just can't imagine. And if anyone is out here listening to this story, it is something of, it's just unimaginable. You know, it's hard sometimes for me to put into words because I think a lot of you out there probably will listen to, you know, all of what LaDonna has shared so far. And you just cannot imagine this happening, you know, but if someone is out there and her story resonates with you, everybody's stories, they're different. But if you see or, or, or have experienced in some ways, some things that she's saying, I'm praying today that you, you, you will seek help. And so LaDonna, let me go back into part of after you found that out and you had the surgery, you came out with everything that was going on. Did you still, did you still move or were you still in the process of moving after you were able to, um, were you still considering moving once all of that happened? What, where were your, where was your mind at that moment after you got out of the hospital? My, my, my mind was not um, on the move, on the job, on anything, mm-hmm. because I wasn't able to um, mentally, physical, emotional, spiritual, nothing. I was, yeah. yeah. So I was actually in the hospital um, two days. Mm-hmm. So my um, friend and mom you know, um, help, you know, with the arrangement, the funeral arrangements, 
Um, and then after the service, we took his body to Florida, where I'm from, and did uh, just a graveside there. And I was there um, in Florida for a while before I, um, because the, the, not the deputy that I shook his hand and told him, I see you, I'll be back. Um, the um, inspector general, he contacted my mom and told her that no matter how long it takes, this position will be uh, there for mm -hmm. me. Wonderful. So, yeah, I still had the job, right. but still, I just went back because I had to have um, someone because I got shot in the hands and the bullet also um, braced my left breast. And we know the heart is on your yes. left side. Um, so I had a cast on my left hand and pins where my bone um, in my right hand um, had shattered. So they had to, you know, put pins in there and after they did the surgery and stuff. And I'm a lefty. Yeah. Oh, my. So um, my right hand. So I, you know, I definitely had the whole... Um, time period of asking why and you know and having my mom and other people that was there um you know supporting and praying and doing everything because I couldn't do anything I couldn't feed myself um feed myself I mean nothing yes so that was a, a um de definitely a transition time in my life and time for um yeah it was it was a, a a dark a dark time. Yes, I I, I can't I can only imagine it was. Let me ask you this: Was his family, your son's father's family, were they around or reached out to you at all? No, his um his family did not. Um, his brother, well, I shouldn't say not all of his family. The the brother and nieces and nephew they did attend to attend the funeral um but the sister and the, the mother didn't yeah and had made kind of you know made contact you know since you know you got all this um social media yeah. now i have a couple of people reach out to me but it's where you know i don't feel i don't i have forgiven him Cause I and them because in my mind, you know, I was mad at all. I was I was ready to knock everybody yes. off, you know, for some of my pain, but it wasn't them. So you know, you as you're going through your healing process and part of grieving, um, so I'm and learning all what I've been through in like a bubble just and burst, and I'm just like my whole world that what I knew um, is no more. more. So, um, so yeah, they have, you know, one or two have reached out or whatever, but I mean, no conversation or whatever. Like okay. That. Let me ask you, did you, did you do any counseling for yourself after, you know, when you were trying to get things back on track and trying to, you know, get your life moving, um, again, did you do any counseling at the time or it was, I did, I did one session because like you say, this is where you have no knowledge, you don't understand. And and no reason God just he 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 know when he said he knows what you can handle and he won't put more on you than you can. That's LaDonna. He put LaDonna name there. So to and counselor one session, I, I didn't have a problem with talking. Yes that was like okay how and i and i asked the therapist I was like how this supposed to go she said you know you just talk like and at that point maybe it was just still too early for me to grasp and, and really try to understand but as far as talking about austin and what happened and you know that that has never been um an issue for me Right. So I didn't understand. And I asked, I was like, well, how are we supposed to do? And she's like, you just talk. I'm like, I don't have a problem with talking. Yeah. So 
they didn't go in debt. So I didn't um, go to counseling until years later. Okay. And I had a better understand and, and grips on my thoughts and and got all my why me and, you know, angry and, you know, frustrating, you know, just trying to find my way after all this. Like now I'm like defining who are yes. you? You know, that is important so. for people to understand. We all, we're human. We go through that why me. That that is something mm-hmm. I'm sure anyone who's been through any any type of tragedy or obstacles, they they we have we all have asked why me. And so when you would ask that question and ask and ask, what do you feel like finally made you turn that into, okay, this happened to me, you know, because it's a quote I love to say, uh, we must face our pain to overcome it. And, and, and of course, understanding everything, what made, what was the turning point for you, you feel like, or that day when you probably felt like you maybe didn't cry, you know, 20 times you've cried five. I always say, you know, every, every, it was a positive thing. If you didn't cry 20 times versus the five, how did you turn that losing your son? I know crying and missing him and wondering why me, how do you finally turn that around? You feel like. It was so many things because uh, I I just knew I didn't have no more tear ducts in my eyes. And then he, I cried some more. So, hey, I was like, okay, that's not it. Um, but like I said, I kept hearing him say awareness. I just kept hearing awareness mm. um, during the recovery, you know, just sitting down. You know, you waiting on everybody to do what you need done for you. And you just had it at the end. Um, uh, one of my aha moments um, during this process was um, when I was at my mom's and she would get up and get me dressed, take me shower, whatever, and she would go in and, and this before I even knew anything about Truffle Dollar. So she was turning the, the TV. I said, okay, you, you, you leave it there. And she said, I'll go and fix your breakfast, you know, after I take a shower or whatever. So I'm, I, 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 to this day, I don't know what... Um, verse or chapter or anything Creflo was preaching from but I can distinctly how you know like he's looking at me you know he just looking at the teleprompter or whatever but to me he was looking at me and he says um nothing just happens everything happens for a reason mm-hmm. and that right there quickened me so until I was like God, so you telling me you knew that this was going to happen? You had a whole nother turn of events that um, came up out of that. So I had so many. uh, It's not just one. Exactly, I understand Um, that. Transferring back, you know, we're moving, transferring back to Georgia. And, you know, it, it was where it was bigger than me. And, uh, you know, uh, if I don't know, how many other people don't know? So it was, it was, the, um, it was a, 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 a multitude of different things that occurred that made me want to, you know what? I can help somebody else. And if, even if telling my story just helped one person, oh, okay, let's start, let's continue his memory and that's how we started with Austin Tyler Foundation I just dropped his last name and um and start asking God to show me how he want me to do this and you know which direction to go at this time and of course you know, I definitely had friends and family to you know support you know the vision of me doing this and Having no experience in, in you know, a foundation, what is needed, da 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 da, nothing. So it, it it was a strong support group that um, you know, assisted me along the way. That's wonderful because it does take you know people to also help. But I do believe, um, you know, God gives us certain 
gives us certain battles and obstacles because he he knew you would take care of this since this was something that you had to dealt you had to deal with he knew you were going to do something with it to help others because i remember hearing a story with um i, I forgot who it was at the time but they they went through um, they were molested and they were saying that you know we do ask why me but they know that there were the, the one thing about it, they knew that, that, that what they went through couldn't be in vain and they wanted to help other yeah. children. And that is what this, the path is about, you know, talking about your story, the path you took, but it's about someone who took something so major that happened in their lives, but they turned it around where it's going to help a multitude of others because now, you yeah. know, it's turning, it's turning into purpose. It's, it's turning into purpose. And, and that's one of my sayings is purpose is bigger than obstacles because now you're helping hundreds and millions of other women, I'm going to say, because it, when helping mm -hmm. them and helping them to understand what truly all these other forms of abuse and how, and looking at you to see how you came out of this. And even after not just being abused, but losing a child, they'll say, why can't I, I can do this also. So that mm -hmm. is one of the, the beauties of out of out of these tragedies is seeing somebody else who's gone through that who took that path and now they are trying to do something good out of it and now Austin Tyler's name will you know be known to the world you know, because yes. uh, his living is not in vain he came he did mm -hmm. what he was supposed to at four years old and now you, his mother is taking it you know to the world taking his name and his um his his uh his his what he he stood for to the world right now to help others let me ask you this so after that happened how long was it after the event when that happened the tragedy that happened that you started the foundation what year did you start the austin tyler foundation it, i started the foundation in 2005 wow that was right that was great i started in 2005 and like you said you just you know you just have this out and then you start just putting things together and and then God starts showing you and bringing people mm -hmm. to the one thing I, I realized is that it's it did it wasn't just for me yes. now God gave me the ability I can see when women are in abusive relationship. I, 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 it's like a magnet and, and I just be like, focused, like, mm -mm. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. And that, that was, you know, during some years where I was still immature when God was mm -hmm. showing me, oh yeah, I'm going to come to you. You know, they're not from you. I can recall this time. Um, we were, uh, my husband is a deacon and we were on, uh, on duty at mm -hmm. church. And I, I seen it clear that he was directing me to this one person at the mm -hmm. altar. I tell you, I, I'm, and this is just how we do as human, because we're human. I, I'm like, I'm looking towards the band. I'm looking up. I'm like, no. And then still, I think this is when pastors like, you know, had a deacon, deacon wives come, mm -hmm. you know, he said that. And I was like, oh, look. And here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm warned right here in church with myself about going to this, this person that I know God was um, drawing me to. And it's like, you know, I'm like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -hmm, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> being disobedient. Yes. And some kind of, she had a child in her hand. And the, the uh, deaconess that was beside me ended up getting the child. And I was like, oh, Lord. Okay, and he just kept on. It was just a pulling, a yes. pulling. So when it finally, you know, went to her and started praying with her, and you know, and I, I knew the connection. Yes, um, praying for her and stuff. And I mean, we were like the last ones up there. She came and sat beside me mm -hmm. um, with the child she had. And she had twins, and the other child with some one of her friends brought her to church and 
of course I knew that it was domestic violence, but she said that they were in, they got into an altercation that night and he went to jail and she didn't know what to do. And, and I was like, you know, at that point it was like, I have to release myself from allowing God to do what he's yes. doing. So, you know, he give us these, we, we don't go through um, these situations, whether it be divorce, um, child molestation, um, domestic violence. We don't go through it for ourselves. He drawing people. They are waiting for us to get ourselves together so we can, so others can be drawn. He said they will be drawn into our yes. bosom or whatever you can um, feed them. Yes. You know, so that was just an example of now I I see and I know those signs. So till I can say, mm. but I go and do it. Now I'm not rebellious as I exactly. was or to move um, now. Of course, you understand it more now. And what yes. truly the purpose that was that's been placed on you and and God gives you that um uh, that knowing now what you and you know how to to do it handle it now so that's a wonderful thing that that's a wonderful place to be um tell me tell me about like you the woman right that you were just talking about now that you've been in the foundation it's been up and you know growing for years now tell me about some of the women you've helped I, I let me say this I was going to mention I know the the hurting hearts tea you do every April that I look forward to every year now that I've been <laughs> attending for the past two to three years that when I tell you uh, everyone out there, she does a beautiful job for, for the awareness and uh, that she's doing. She, it is so well put together and I look forward to it because I know it's helping but also to the point of how she she does it, you know, excellent and is and and in order. And tell us a little bit about that, as well as the women that you are helping, and uh, something about your through your Austin Tyler Foundation, the Hurting Hearts Tea that you have in April of every year. Okay, well, and there again, that was a nugget that God gave me to start the um, Hurting Hearts Tea. Is because he he gave me an analogy. You know, we as African American women, you know, it's like we don't have friends or we can't, we don't trust, you know, and all these other things. But when we going through situations, we never tell anyone. Yes. And when something happened, you say, uh, "Well, I didn't know she was going through that." But I seen this and, you know, I seen that, you know, those type of conversation we all have heard or been a part and of. And that's where, like um, you said, for that divorce, finances, you know, just just even internal mar marital problems or it could be anything. It, we all sit there and just think we're alone in whatever we're dealing and with. We, we and we don't tell them. anyone. So yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just had to agree. No, that's fine because that, that's, that's so mm -hmm. true. And so he said to me, he was like, Okay, what about all my friends? Now, do not, because I, I tell everything. I ain't, I ain't got uh, no secrets. Yes. You know what I say? <laughs> Another thing that God gave me with um, start with awareness, but make prevention your priority. Yes. We have to speak out. We have to let everybody know. So I'm like, I, I did a test. Okay, what's going on? You know. No, you know, nothing ain't nothing, you know. It's like, okay, well, this going on, this happened or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we want to be open with each other. So I was like, let's get together and really see if you say you're my friend, then you should know what I'm yes. going through. Yes. And if I can't tell you what I'm going through, why I'm saying you my friends. This is different between friends and a so we, we, and I say, we have to pull down and break down the friend. We, we use friends so yes, loosely. I agree. Even a, a associate, you know what I'm yes. saying? It's, 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 so that's how that was birthed. And that's how everybody got to start. We started out with everybody. You, you bring, you invite your own people to sit at your table. Yes. 
so you can get to know who you, you know, the people in your group and really, you know, and then hearing our speakers and myself, um, and, you know, to resonate and then just make it a, a safe place and atmosphere yeah. where each other can share what they're going yes. through. Because of the guilt and the shame, a lot of people don't say anything because, okay, they're going to talk about me, this, that, and the other. But you know what? It's a lot of dead people here. Amen. Like, off clothes that could have just said something because I don't know your resources. Exactly. Or how I can help. So until we um, start speaking about and um, being open with one another, and I know everybody don't have your best we did, That's the truth. One or two that you can confide yes. in. That's at one or two that you don't have, you can make you sleep easy. You, you know what I'm saying? Because one thing I like to, um, before I go on, um, say we don't understand the effects of divorce, sex molestation, yes. the uh, violence has on the yes, family. I agree. Just you, the yes. victim. It's you, the survivor, you, the mother, you, my mom, she had, she got on um, anxiety pills. And yes. I mean, because yes. you're her baby. <laughs> one I'm of her, her babies. Baby, her baby. And she, yeah, one. And she couldn't even, you know, she's like, I, she couldn't do nothing but uh, hold me because she had three of her babies. Yes. So she couldn't tell me how to feel. But just her being there, you know, was the support enough. So we, we have to get out. And one thing, that through this process as well, God showed me three things that are vital. Mm -hmm. Listeners, write this down. This, this is a free tip. Three things are vital. A relationship with God or whomever your maker is, a higher power or creator or whoever, God is mine. Amen. One is to identify the problem, whether it's you lost a job, drugs, domestic violence, divorce, Whatever that issue you're dealing with, identify the problem. Because if you don't speak it, you can't heal it. I agree. And the third one is a sound support system that no matter is not going to judge, just going to be your ear, you know, be the answer when you ask the question, but just having that support. So throughout life, whether it's on your job or wherever as well, if you have those three things, work those. I was like, wow, that's the that's the that's masterpiece, masterpiece that's right the, there. That's a plan to try. Yes, that's the plan. That's a plan. That's the plan. All in itself. And I will be in putting all of that together when I put the notes together for the show. Your three points clearly. Yeah. Yes. That, that, that's the plan. Critical. So when I through Austin Tyler Foundation, um, we raise awareness through um, fundraising events. As you say, the Hurting Hearts Tea, we love our that. Oh, that dancing. is so much fun, everybody. You have to, so I'll be fun. posting that every time. We just did one just recently in December yes. with our uh, Christmas, I'm, our ugly Christmas sweaters. <laughs> yes, yes. And then we um, support uh, domestic violence shelters. We, we give back to them. We do outreach and prevention programs, support groups, one-on-one. -on -one. And we also assist in safety plan because most of the referrals I get is by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Word of mouth or, or someone knows someone or someone say, hey, call LaDonna. And that's how, because mm -hmm. Please know you, you read my bio. I do work yes, full do. time and run. A full time. <laughs> and it says investigations manager at that, so that has to be some uh, a lot of detailed work. Sound like also. <laughs> so you, you, so that's what we do um, as far as through the um, foundation and the domestic violence shelter in Albany, Georgia, Liberty House is the one that we always partner with and give back because that was the one there. I didn't necessarily have to go mm -hmm. there because, you know, I was still work, well, I was working, had income, but just the resources that um, the director at the time provided me about the counseling and all that stuff, it was just, it was just, you know, priceless. 
So we definitely always go back to Liberty House to help uh, assist them in uh, what we're doing. Let me just mention this. And I know it's because of purpose, because um, I work, uh, since I went through a divorce, you know, I'll, I'll, I, I work at the church, even with our divorce ministry, but how do you, Mm -hmm. so, so I understand how you don't hold the pain when you hear it from other people, but how do you handle it yourself dealing with women, you know, going through some of these traumatic um, experiences and it, it, you know, it can take you back sometimes to those moments of your own pain, but how do you keep that foundation. I believe it's for the three vital uh, reasons you said here for me, but I'm just going to have you still say it. You know, my re- mine is that relationship with God for one, but when you hear other people going through that pain, you know, you just, I just want to grab every woman and hug them. Every woman that's gone through anything, yeah. because I know women deal with so much. It's enough. We try to take yeah. care of our families, but how do you still manage keeping your that big smile you have, that joyful way you carry yourself. And I promise you, you see she, she and her husband, they're, they're just <laughs> the cutest couple. Um, but when, you, how do you keep that smile when you know you're still helping women going through such a hurting piece that brings that memory back to what happened to you? I think the main key of it all is forgiving Amen. myself. That's a major one too. Forgive me. Myself for the lack of knowledge and that I didn't know, not blaming myself, mm-hmm. knowing that and having that understanding and relationship, like Repo said, and it even that it was just a blur, but knowing that God, nothing just happens. Everything happens for a reason. Yes. And this was a part of his plan because guess what? If Austin was still here in 21. Uh, I wouldn't probably be at this point. I probably wouldn't be in the relationship um, that I have now. I wouldn't have the relationship with God right now. You know, it's so many different factors that alter, but because he chose me. And and one of my favorite um, scriptures is the book of Job. Mm -hmm. And um, this transition, I just would put, Wherever we had Joe, I put LaDonna. Yes. Wow. That's that's powerful. And you see he, everything. He everything. took everything. Yes. Everything. And I, and, I, and I just, you know, I was like, look around. Like, oh, my God, I can't complain. <laughs> this man, his children, you know, his cattle, his wife, everything. Yes. yes. So who am I that he can't try me? I agree. Or, or, or tell Satan that you I can't be tried because the relationship was already there. And I'm just glad that I, I passed the test. So I think giving yourself opens me up to receive. And it's not where when I share, I'm stronger yeah. now. I had a moment, 16 years, almost 16 years um, in September. I have my mom. Of course. Um, two years ago, I had three graduations, three gra- school graduations I attended the same year my baby was supposed to graduate from high school. Wow. wow. You had to go to three. Everybody else is smiling and laughing and having a good time. No one knew I was crying Amen. inside me how am I doing yeah. you know so it's where you find comfort and peace within yes, yes. And celebrate those victories and, and and you know milestones with others yes and, and and I want everybody to remember that part she's saying you have to find that that peace within and comfort within you have to because Yes. I, your mind will always go back to Austin would have been graduating. Austin would have gone to his prom. You know, Austin would be in a you know, few years, maybe getting married. And, you know, all of those firsts that we all like to, mm-hmm. you know, think of for our children. And it has to come with that peace and comfort within. Yes. Oh. So, you know, helping others, you know, is, is 
I mean, it gave me peace. It gave me joy yes. in knowing that just, you know, doing a safety plan or just talking with someone. Um, someone just called me the other day, you know, about, hey, I got someone I want to, you know, yep, call me. my husband. He even tell, hey, this this our ministry, this this our baby, yes. you know, you know, yes. He's right there, you know, praying and 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 supporting. Okay. So that strong, you know, it was just just knowing, just understanding your purpose in life. That is that the is key. the key. That is the key. And let me tell you, I can talk to you all day long. I know everyone, let me tell you, I can go another hour with her just to hear more, but I know we need to wrap it up. I, she will be back at some point. Hopefully I have to ask her, but uh, yeah. <laughs> because uh, I, we, we, we will be bringing her back again in October. That is normally domestic violence um, month. Is it not LaDonna? Okay. Yeah. So you probably, you will be hearing from her more. So let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you uh, this first, because I, I, Austin is, is, is always going to be what I, when I see you, I think of the name Austin Tyler, your name is LaDonna, but I think of your baby. What do you think? You okay. said he would have been 20, 21 this year. Yep. 21 April. April. What do you, and that's why you have, okay. That makes sense to me. What yeah. do, you, what do yeah. you feel like you, he would have been saying to you right now? Or do you feel him? I'm, th- I'm sure every year when he sees that, oh, look at my mom, what my mom is doing. What would you think he would be? Yeah. I, I think he's just smiling and um, he's proud oh, of me. Of course. You know, like he, he's really proud of me and what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think the, the forgiveness is so vital that we like to hold people and and not looking at ourselves so even I had to write a letter to the to the to the deceased I can and let him know that I forgive you that's I didn't want to go on my life you know holding and the what if and and I can't ask um why exactly I had to bring, I had to get that self piece of understanding why. Yes. And God showed me. So I could write a letter and burn it and throw it in the sea of forgiveness. And I'm 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 free of that. I don't hold that baggage. Okay. The more baggage you continue to hold, the heavy the load exactly. is. Exactly. And you're just building on, just building and adding to it. You need to release. And that's, that sounds like what you did because forgiveness is key to be moved, to move forward. And, and, and that's something you would suggest, I'm sure for others, you know, get that forgiveness and write a letter and, and burn it even. Burn it. But truly make sure you're burn forgiving. It. Let it go. Yes. Truly make sure you're forgiving and burn it and do, do not pick it back up. Not, not that same yeah. way you pick it up to run that man with that mantle, like she's doing with Austin Tyler foundation incorporated right now and the different ways she's doing it and, and, and making sure that again, Austin's name is not, you know, it, it, it won't be in vain. His, his death won't be in vain. Yes. So, it's not amen. In vain. so let me ask you this. Um, what is there before we end, we're going to ask about how people can reach out to you and your foundation but before you do give that information, tell us, is there anything else that maybe I didn't ask that you feel like is very important that you would want to say before you give your, how people can connect with you? Well, I, that, that's the, um, the three points was the thing that jumped ahead of that, that I wanted to make sure that, that people know. It was said at the right time. Thing. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. That was perfect. <laughs> Speak out. Let someone know what is going on. You are not alone. Amen. Do not be shame or embarrassed um, about what you're doing. And it's not your fault. Yes, it's not your fault. Um, we are designed to be nurturers and, and we want to fix it. Everything. Some things we can't fix. Yes. And we try to fix, you know, once your child or 
husband, boyfriend, whoever, get out of your face, you can't control anything they do. Yes. So once you get that and understand that you are not alone, exactly. it's help. Listen, it's so many resources out here. More, more these last sixteen years than I know. Prior to, I didn't even know about Liberty House, and Liberty House was right in Albany. But the thing about it is, is that's important. You must know the signs. Know the signs of domestic violence. You will never know that you are in a domestic violence situation. Yeah. That's when awareness come in. And that's when, you know, your, your circle, you know, we, if we all inform ourselves, knowledge is power. Well, I don't need to know this. Or don't, you don't know, it might not be for you. Exactly. You, this house might not be your thing. Yeah. But what if it's somebody lost a job or somebody on um, alcohol or drugs or whatever? Mm-hmm. And with this, and because all those things are just subtopics, yes. I would say, to the domestic violence. Because domestic violence, because you got dealing with all those, that doesn't make you, it's only thing domestic violence, control and power. And once they lose that, and I must say, because it's uh, the day after, we seen that on national TV yes, yesterday. Yes. Lose control and power, what happens? I agree. Yes. Clearly for today. Yes, I agree 100%. If anyone wants to get with me, um, uh, the, my email address is you can email Austin Tyler Foundation at gmail.com. Um, you can visit the website, Austin Tyler Foundation.org. Um, if you want to talk, 404. 404- 740-8369. You can follow me on Austin Tyler 04 on Instagram or Austin Tyler Foundation on Facebook. Wonderful. And I will put all of that information um, on our all of our social media uh, platforms so you can have that. LaDonna, I am so thankful again for your time, for your story, and for how God is using you. It, it, everyone, I just want you to know, LaDonna's path is your survival guide to show it can be done. Purpose is bigger than obstacles. Do the work. There's purpose on the other side of your obstacle. You just have to know that. Your path can be repaved. It's not gonna change what happened in some cases, but just know that you can repave and move into a different part of your life. All of those points that LaDonna pointed out, forgiveness is key God um, and, and identifying the problem and getting a sound support system. Those are a lot of keys to helping you on your healing and your, and your, and your process. We hope you will do the work yourself, sister, because there are other people out there waiting for you. Again, LaDonna, thank you. Thank you for having me. During the COVID-19 crisis, domestic violence has risen dramatically. If you or a loved one is in an abusive relationship and need immediate help, call 911. To support someone affected by domestic abuse, contact the Austin Tyler Foundation at www.austintylerfoundation.org or call 404-740-8369. Another organization you can contact for support is the National Domestic Violence Hotline at www.thehotline.org or call 1-800-799-SAFE. That's 1-800-799-7233. Thank you everyone for hanging with us. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and other platforms. So you can stay up on our bi-weekly, real, real conversations with these bold women. You can follow The Path Podcast on Facebook at The Path Podcast and on Instagram and Twitter at The Path underscore podcast.
podcast. And if you would like to be a guest on the show or have questions for a future show, you can email us at the path, the number four, W-A-R-D at gmail.com. That's the path forward at gmail.com. And if you're looking for a speaker or you're in need of a life coach, please reach out to me again at the path forward at gmail.com or at a c k o r l e h at gmail.com thank you until next time